Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. So before I do my uh, screen sharing, I just want to let you know in the chat, I post a PowerPoint, uh, the link to a PowerPoint file that I'm going to use today. You're welcome to download that right now. And um, you can make the notes at, at, at when we get, go, th uh, go through the material. <coughs> Just <coughs> sorry. Okay, so this is about uh, homework assignment number seven and also your final exam. All right. Um, so um, what we this is what you have uh, done in. Uh, homework assignment number six, which you actually develop program on both the client side or server side, and they can do update, which means that you upload a uh, post to the server, and the server will, will create a new entry, which is a file entry, or the server might merge some new update with the existing post. So that, that was the first uh, function call, called update. And the second function, which is communicate between client servers called search, which the client provides some keyword and the search basically uh, provide uh, some feedback. <clears throat> so for homework seven, we're actually adding one extra concept. We, we call it a history, but it's really try to keep tracking uh, who has read what and especially maybe uh, the person who actually own this post, he wants to know how popular my post is in terms of its population, uh, propagation and things like that. <clears throat> okay, so, um, so there is a one difference between reaction and, uh, and the history. So reaction or comment means that a person actually write a comment and, or, or he actually <clears throat> click a like. The history is a little bit different. History is actually from the uh, search engine perspective. It's trying to see whether you have read it, even though you haven't responded to that, but whether you have actually received from the server that about this post that you read it, you just didn't have time to respond. So, so there is a tiny difference there, but that's significant uh, for um, a lot of application. <coughs> okay, so, um, so let me first talk about the objectives of this, uh, this um, assignment. Um, the, the first word I use uh, collaboratively. So it means that this homework, you're not work by yourself. You actually collaborate with other students that together you produce uh, 10 posts, at least 10 posts that you need to submit. Two of them, when you, uh, by the way, you're gonna submit 10 posts. Two of them, you will be the original author. That in order for this 10 posts to be count, that this 10 posts has to uh, have 20 different uh, VS ID, which means that those ID are, are, are different, of course, but the valid means that they are really from our class. Um, and which means that you actually have 20 users history that associated with this post, okay? And that, that's, that's what we want. You, you actually get that uh, uh, developed, which means that, uh, for example, one of you is going to <coughs> uh, develop a post about uh, homework assignment number seven, for example, a sec four, homework assignment number seven, <coughs> and then you upload that post to the server using update. And the other student is actually going to use a keyword search to download that post from the server. And then in that process that the, the second student is gonna add his or her own VSID to the post and then update that back to the server. So now the server has a post with at least two different VSID. One is the original author, one is a new author who just used search engine. 
<clears throat> so I mentioned that this is collaborated because you can imagine that uh, probably all of you has to at least write two and maybe more and have the posts upload to the, to the server. And then you're also doing search, which you download the post and then you append your own uh, uh, what we call history record, which I will show you what it is. And then based on that, uh, you, your, your post is actually accumulating. And eventually when there is more than 20 uh, VSID, you can actually try to validate. So that's why uh, we have a validation process. You can actually send the, the post with those uh, history, history record to the server and to see if this is good enough. And if the server tell you that this is good enough, then you, can, you save it and then include this as those 10 posts that you're going to have it, okay? So you're going to get this, 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 this uh, homework that you need to have 10 posts to do that, okay? <clears throat> so in terms of implementation, that you only respond for the client side. You don't worry about the server side. In, in fact, I think the, the programming perspective of this class, uh, this particular homework, it is actually going to be lighter than, than the previous one because you probably can reuse a lot from your homework six to do that, okay? And when you hand in that, you're going to hand in those 10 validated posts, which I will show you how they looks like. And also you're going to submit all the source code and make file using hand in, okay? And I think uh, somebody just brought up that the hand in might not work after this Friday. I hope it will. If not, then you're going to do email. Okay, just email that to me. <coughs> okay, as the implementation is only on the client side, and I won't tell you the server side because you won't know what the server is checking, what kind of thing is doing. I give you some idea, but I, I won't give you the source code or even a, a binary to do that. Um, but I'm going to have a bonus credit that after I, I, I thought about this for a while is that you will get 1% because it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a server which you don't have the source code, which is, we call it black box testing. I mean, for example, you actually identify that the server have certain kind of bug when you send some of the requests, the server will crash. Or you will see that when you send something, the server is actually getting back the result, which is incorrect. So. I mean, I believe that the server, which I try to eliminate as many as block as possible, still has vulnerability. So this is just bonus credit that if you are the first one to identify a valid vulnerability or bug, you will get one extra 1%, one okay, for, for bonus credit. And I will only take this 1% by June 15th, um, um, uh, midnight, okay? <clears throat> so that's objectives and bonus credit. All right, so this is what we did, what we talked about in homework assignment number six, that we have two function, search and update, that um, we, we do the things that we're doing. But now we're actually <coughs> having a one extra thing called history record. So it means that we want to track that who has actually been deliver about this post due to the search engine uh, at what time and what GPS location. So if you think about this, this is actually very similar to what we're dealing with uh, uh, in the Google today. When you submit the keyword using some, uh, using your uh, Android phone, and then you have your GPS location, IP address, and things like that. <laughs> so this is being tracked about how, what keyword you search and what kind of content you're reading and whether you read that content or not. So we're doing a mini scale of that scenario here. But what we have right now is adding another one called valid, okay? So what we have is the search and uh, update is very similar to what you have in uh, homework sick, except right now, that um, in fact, this is only applied to update, that you have one extra thing called uh, history record. And the new function we added is called valid, validate. So validate means that you submit uh, the post with the history record, and the server is going to check on this and see if, if this looks okay in terms of the, the history record, 
whether it's it's uh, it's uh, have a twenty plus uh, of them, and whether that VSID is really the um, the the um, the correct ID. And also, we'll check a few other things, which I will talk about that later when we explore a little bit deeper into this. Um, but if the check is successful, the server is going to send not just a, a JSON to you, not just the post, not just the history record, but also has another new key called validated. And validated will come with a what we call checksum, a secure checksum, which basically <clears throat> authenticate saying that this post has been validated by the server. And so that the, the last thing you receive with that validated is going to the thing for, for you to hand in as a 10. So you need to collect <coughs> at least 10 of those validated, okay, before you submit your, your final. So that's what you get, okay? Remember that you have to have 10 and those 10 need to be validated. And I will, uh, oh, I have an example actually. <clears throat> to show you. Um, let me actually go through this very quickly. Wait a minute. Where's that slide? It's gone. Oh, here. This is, this is a JSON. If it's a validated at the end that this JSON received on the server, it will have a new key value pair. The key will say validated. And uh, um, the value is a, a, a checksum. That, that is actually a black box to you. I actually did some computation based on the entire JSON and decide <coughs> that is the number that's, that's going to be generated. So in other words, if you, if you modify the, the, uh, the post, uh, you might not be uh, uh, generating the, the checksum, the, especially is a key. Uh, JS, uh, checksum. If you if you um, heard about something like a key MD5, key SHA, this is the authentication integrity check uh, for for cybersecurity, and you might not uh, be able to reproduce the the correct uh, checksum over there. Okay, so just to let you know that that is how it's important for you to submit ten of those files. Okay, <clears throat> all right. So I'm going to um, come here. So, so this is a server side that uh, you don't need to implement. Uh, I already implement here. And, uh, um, and then this is the uh, HW7 uh, ECS uh, 36B HW7 JSON, which specified RPC, which is very similar to your homework six, but except I have a new function called valid, okay? and validate, and then you need to interact with the program to do the work. So, <laughs> so when, I, when, I, when I look at my implementation, because I, I developed the server side, so I actually check with the client side, um, I found that HW7 search, I, I can use it just directly. I don't have to modify or do anything. I just use my homework six search, and then I just, get back the array of uh, post JSON, and I just save that at the client side. And then I can use it. For example, for this purpose, why do I need to save it? Because after I save it, I can append the new history record into that. So, so the design is a little bit different, is that we allow the user who obtained the, the post, it's their job and their discretion to decide whether they want to append their historical record or not. Because it's a privacy, we think that nobody should track what, what you're doing unless you're willing to do that. So that's the purpose of we push that to the client side, to let client decide whether they want to do that or not. Okay, so HW7 search is really, uh, I, I would say, just identical to the, to the uh, original one. In fact, I'm using the same program. And HW7 update, is also very similar, <clears throat> except I need to somehow merge the history record into that. So by doing that, I actually wrote a program. This is a utility program that I use on the client side that I'm going to share that source code with you. Is that HW7.cpp is going to help you to construct a JSON of a valid history record. So then you can just append that record into your JSON 
and together you do HW7 update and send it to over there. Okay, so that, that's the second program that you need to, I mean, uh, I will say HW7 update.cpp is really slightly more complicated than search, but not too much more complicated than HW7, uh, HW6 update. So both this program, uh, if you have done homework six, that's, they're really similar, okay? <coughs> okay. And then the new program is called HW7 Validate. And in the HW7 Validate, the, the, uh, the program in my implementation is very similar to HW7 Update. But the only thing is that um, I'm not uh, doing any kind of history merging because I'm assuming somebody already merged the history for me. So HW7 Validate, in fact, is simpler than Update. It just send it over there. And when they get back, if it's not, doesn't work, it will give you an error message of why it didn't work. It will send an error code uh, for different kind of error. Uh, for example, I, I know in my test minus A, if you've got a minus eight, that means that, okay, one of your VSID doesn't belong to this class. Because I actually check every single student's VSID, I build a database. So every historical record you actually enter I will check whether it's actually one of our students. It's not, um, even just one digit is wrong, that it will, it will throw back to you and not, not work. And, or, or it check for duplicate, that if you have a VSID that duplicate in the history, I also don't count that, okay? <clears throat> so validate is as a result of validation. If it's successful, you're gonna get that validated uh, uh, post, okay? All right, so now I'm going to talk about how do I actually deal with history. So first I, I just, again, this is our friend that, uh, <coughs> sorry, this is called uh, um, class post, okay? So under class post, now I have a new attribute, it's called uh, history, okay? This history is, is a, a pointer to a vector of transaction pointer, okay? So, so then we're going to include what is in the transaction pointer. I'm going to show you. Oh, basically the history record try to track who has read this post by the search engine, okay? So this is a transaction. <clears throat> Inside the transaction, the history record consists of this four fields. When, when did you read it? Who actually read it? It's a, a GPS location. When you read it, where's your location and what's the IP address? So those are the, what we call a history record. It means that at this time, this person is reading at this location with this IP address, okay? So the, the record, just, just let you know that it looks like this is the top part of this slide. Basically, you, you, you should be familiar with. It represents a post. And now we're just adding some historical record array over here, for example. Um, <clears throat> this is the one historical record that's generated by HW7 history. Okay, HW7 history, you can see that who should do it, it you have a two uh, avatar name and a VSID. This two represent uh, the agent who is doing that. And create a time represent the, the time stamp when this uh, uh, record is being recorded. And then you have a location, which is a GPS with a latitude and longitude. And then you have a network, which is IPv4 address with your IP address, um, assuming you're using that IP address there. Okay, so let me, let me just, just, um, <clears throat> just uh, show you very briefly about um, uh, the history program. Uh, what, what's, what's that? <clears throat> so what I, uh, let me see, I, I, I will do it here. Okay, I, I was just doing the client directory. I can do any directory. You can see that my client directory, I only have a search clause here, but even that file doesn't have to be here. So I already have HW7 history <clears throat> running. So it actually take either uh, one, two, three, four, five, five or six argument. I will first do the five argument and then I will do the six argument. So let me actually just do one thing uh, because I want to type the 
the, the result I generated earlier, which is the record I generated earlier. So I'm going to do this, follow this. The first argument is a VSID. So you can just put your own VSID. I'm just using my own VSID here. Okay, that's the first argument. The second argument is the avatar name. I mean, over here, my avatar name is Oracle. <clears throat> yeah, I will just change my, uh, my name to Smith. Okay, assuming I make a change. Okay, latitude, I would say 169, uh, two, and uh, longitude minus 210. I don't know where that is. You can use Google map to find, figure out where you are. I mean, you can use whatever <coughs> GPS location, but try to be realistic, okay? And then I would say the IP address, I would just, randomly type IP here, just 234.4.15.109. Okay, and, and that's, that's the one with uh, six parameter. If I enter this way, it will generate a record for me. Okay, so this is just a tool for you to use command line to generate a JSON that follow the uh, location history uh, record format, okay? And you can actually save this file. Let me just save this as, uh, let me say hhh.json, okay? So I just save it as hhhh.json. And I, I can potentially use this append to, to a JSON, but I can actually directly use the extra um, uh, argument to do something, try to merge that into directly. So for example, I have a, let me see, I should have a base JSON somewhere. Okay. So I have a base JSON over here. So I want to merge this record into this JSON. So what I can do is this, okay? I'm going to do this. I'm going to directly input that JSON. <clears throat> okay. So you can see it's actually created this, this one, but I want to save it. I will call it ee.json, okay? This one I just created. So if you look at ee.json, it's, it's, it's the base JSON, it's a base post, but now it has the history that I just created. You see here, I have a one history, uh, it's an array, it has that Smith and whatever number I just type it in. Okay, so this program will help you to merge into your update so you can actually send it to the, to the, for your update or for your search. So this is a facility I, I want to give it to you. So one of the trick I, I do want to say is sometime because you can see that there's a different kind of format. So I want to actually check what's the difference between this JSON I just generated and the base input JSON. So let me actually use my homework five. I, I mean, for some reason, I really like my homework five. <clears throat> homework five parse. Wait a minute. Oh, hang on. Homework five parse. Remember the, the original base JSON is here. I will call that, uh, I will generate to uh, f1.json, okay? And then remember the JSON I just generate called EE. And then I call it f2.json. <clears throat> okay, so now let's do a difference between f1.json and f2.json. You see the difference is exactly the history. Nothing else is different. Okay, so now you know by doing this, you, you see the, um, the tool HW7 history is helping you to produce this record and also generate the, the right um, uh, format of the JSON post that you can send it to the update. Okay, so that, that is just tell you that the history record, what it is, and uh, how do you uh, can use some of the tool. I mean, you can develop your own tool. It's not that difficult. If you look at my code, it's actually very simple. We just call JSON to post here and there, okay? All right, so what you, what you want to have, well, what we just developed is that using that history.cpp, so this is the original JSON with everything. So now what we have is an extra call history. And what you want to have is uh, each of, I mean, the example I show you has only one, 
but what you want to have is you want to accumulate into 20. And this 20 is, is a pen of 20 of those small history record that I just showed you from 20 different students. Okay, so you want to have 10 posts totally and each of them was 20, so, which means that you have to write something and you have to search something. You sometimes participate to others, sometimes you create your own. Okay, so that's what you want to do over here. Okay, so let me actually go through the rule very quickly. So I already say that, uh, um, that your VSID should be included in 10 plus posts uh, for their record. And, and at least two of them, you're the original author means from. And we will check uh, um, invalid history record. For example, um, your VSID is, is incorrect, or the timestamp is, is kind of suspicious, or <laughs> there are some other things we might be checking. Um, but um, how do you know what we're checking? Contact the validate, okay? Using the function validate to do that. I mean, we also look for the chain of historical record. I mean, let me give you an example that if you submit a, a post, which uh, you have 25 historical record from 25 students, but from the server side, I only realize that post gets searched for 10 times. So I know there's something suspicious basically saying that, well, how can this, this post get searched only for 10 times? It can accumulate 25 times of the record. So, so we're checking those kind of number to, to make sure that you really follow the protocol. But that's a game because if you find a way to actually convince the, the server is a valid and, and it's a valid uh, 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 JSON for homework seven, and yet you know it's actually invalid because you actually somehow fabricate uh, something. You got, if you tell me you're the first one to actually realize that vulnerability, you got that 1% uh, credit, extra credit, okay? Okay, so um, <clears throat> before I uh, move on, I want to just uh, open the floor. Any question at this moment? Let me actually just stop the uh, sharing so I can see the screen. <clears throat> we have a couple in chat. Okay, let me check. Thank you. Hey Thomas, if you if you uh, uh, crash the server, yeah, that's that that is a problem, but. But that's a good problem. Okay, we, we have to fix. We will. I I I will. I will stay up and uh, fix that problem. Okay. I I I will be delighted if we can somehow somehow crash that. All right. <coughs> Let me see. But only the first one who actually uh, identified the bug will get a credit. So, so you when you saw the crash, you have to find out. You have to give me more information. So lead to lead me to fix the bug and then that will be good okay uh i don't think you need to write uh transaction.cpp i think i just use transaction.cpp as uh, as it was from um from homework three i think that that was the same same transaction.cpp i use but i okay i do uh roll something called um okay there are two questions um, from the server side, I actually wrote uh, a dump J for transaction uh, dot CPP as well. But from the client side, you actually don't need to do that. I mean, from the client side, um, let me see, do I have to do that on the client side? I think from the client side, I'm pretty sure I don't need to do that much. I just append the JSON string to the JSON. I might not even need to convert it, okay? <clears throat> uh, the history only those uh, Patrick. Wait a minute, I have a Patrick Jim here. Okay, I mean Patrick, you can solve all the problems I have. Okay, so we we have uh, uh, I mean I mean we have a one student called Red Zhang that that would be good. All right, so um, um, other than uh, this four. 
yes, those four are the only element that's included in the locate the, the history as I show on the slide. Okay. I don't want to get too complicated for that. <clears throat> um, okay, how do you get the current time? Uh, it's there is an example. I, I actually get the current time uh, inside the HW7 history. It, it will get the time. I will, I will show you the code, um, but you can also have other way to get it, okay? <clears throat> you know, um, okay, uh, I, I'll answer the, 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 some of these are private questions. I probably should talk separately. That's a good question. If you can, if you can use my VSID and avatar name, um, yeah, you can, you can do that. That will make it 19, right? If you use my VSID avatar name, if you can do that. But, but the thing is you have to search, right? If I count the number of search doesn't, doesn't work, uh, I, I would say uh, it's not good. I mean, it's an authenticity problem. Yeah, I, I give the permission that that counts one. You can use my VSID and avatar name, okay? All right, so I think that's, uh, okay, if you don't remember your avatar name, let me know. I can, I can provide that for you, okay? Oh, you need to do search because, um, because update is just update the, your own record, your own post, but if you don't, uh, do search, then the post will not come to you. Other people's posts won't come to you. And therefore, if other people's post, if you think about that, if there is already a post which has uh, um, 20 people on it, and you just append your own record there, your own uh, history record, you're, 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 you're done one immediately, right? I mean, you do this eight times, you search eight times and search for big posts, and then you add your record and then uh, update it. Okay, after you, you search, you update it, and then you validate. Okay, search first, update, and then validate. And then you have a one of the 10 files, right? But I, I think that I said only A of them could be that way, but the other two, you have to be the first. You have to have at least two as the original author, okay? <clears throat> Okay, the keyword could be anything you choose. The keyword could be anything you choose. So I assume we still have Facebook, we still have Discord, we still have other channel for students to communicate. You can guess what's other people's keyword, but you can also just discuss on Facebook, this is totally legitimate. You can say, hey, I have a post with this keyword uh, uh, Patrick Jane, please just search for Patrick Jane. You can see my post. Okay, I, I like to see you collab. That's why I'm saying this is collaborative. If you know your friends and they have some keyword, you should communicate to make sure you collude. Okay, this is fine with me. Okay, I'm, I'm not. I'm not saying that you cannot collaborate. This is I emphasize is collaborative. So it means that you have to find a way to collaboratively obtain those. Um, uh, 10 posts for each one of you through the server that we provide, okay? Yeah, you can use any, use different keyword, but well, well, you can, you can use uh, um, uh, whatever keyword you choose, but if you use a very, very strange keyword, it, it might be hard for other people to, to find it, or, or it might be easier for people to find this particular one if you use different keywords. So that's, a, that's the, the something, uh, the, the, the issue with search engine, that how do you actually decide when you actually write a, write a uh, post, what keyword you want to upload. I do want to mention this as well, that you can actually add the keyword. So when I download a post, that this post is only have five uh, uh, history record, means I need 15. And you're not author, but you realize that this post could be searchable, adding a few other keywords. You should actually add those keywords to the JSON file and do an upload. Because when you do upload, 
the new keyword will be into the search engine. And therefore, it will be easily searchable. And then it will accumulate the 20 historical record much faster. Okay, so if you think about that, that's, that's called search engine optimization um, uh, for you to consider. Okay, there is a lot of realistic scenario, actually. I, I, I hope that you will gradually realize that's actually happening here, okay? Okay, the, the server is already online, but uh, um, I actually put in a different IP address. I will put it online to, uh, after this class to the, to the Cyrus because I have been testing the server <coughs> myself, okay? All right, so no more question. I'm going to, um, I'm going to show you a quick demo. I'm going to share the screen. Okay, before I do that, I just want to tell you that um, this is this is code. I will uh, um, give it to you, um, and then you can um, just download it, play with it to see what I did here. So this is this is the HW seven history that this part. So I basically create transaction, and then using whatever the the object we have. Uh, I, I don't think I use any dumb J so far. Okay, but this part of the code, I think one of you asked me, well, how do you get your timestamp? So this part of the code is how I actually get my timestamp. I basically use the time function, get to ticks. And then I use GM time to put this ticks into the STDTM. And then using that, I actually create the uh, uh, JV time. And, and then using the, the JV time class, I have a set STDDM, which is the code I gave it to you, and you can actually create that, that time, okay? And, and the second part though, is that if you have a one extra argument, then I try to do the merge part. And when I do the merge part, I did call, uh, I did call the, um, I did call all this parsing, but the most important after parsing, I called uh, JSON to post. Okay, I did JSON to post, which posts that object over there, and also update the, the history over here. And eventually, for the second part, that I did call dump J on the, on the post. But if you don't want to just generate, just want to generate a historical record, you actually don't need a second part, okay? All right, so that's the code you're going to receive from me. So I'm going to run the, the client, and the server. Let me actually first run the server side. <clears throat> Let me, I already clean, my server side has nothing. So my server side is basically just running with one argument. <clears throat> you don't really need to worry about that, but it's, it's a server. I mean, for homework assignment number six, you, you don't need to provide any argument. But here I need to provide argument because I have a, a file which record all the VSID that's, that's actually available, okay? So, <clears throat> so I'm going to do client side. Right. So the first thing, uh, let me let me just move all the JSON to uh, move all the yeah. I'm, I want to move all the JSON to, to JSON directory. Okay, I have nothing. So I have a program called HW Seven Search. Let me do the search first. S E A. Sorry, R C H. Is this working? Okay, it's working. Okay, I want to get the search clause. I remember I just put the search clause here in this JSON. So when I do this, I fail, right? I mean, it's not there, it doesn't work. So I'm going to upload, okay? So I'm going to upload the update, just, just like what you have for homework assignment number six. It's really similar, I just want to tell you that. Um, I think it's called base JSON. Oh, I put it here. Okay, I basically upload that JSON, and you can see that it's being received by, by the server side. Okay, by the way, uh, I, I forgot who actually pointed out this excellent point about the server, about the size. So now my server uh, has a lot of checks, so it can handle duplication very well. 
So for example, this post I just upload, it has, um, it has the, the size of the code is 3,000 baht, right? 3042. So <coughs> previously, if I actually update again, that will make the, the file double the size. It will make it bigger because it didn't remove uh, redundancy. So just give you a hint, and now the server uh, take care of redundancy. If I do this again, um, and if you come over here, it's actually receive it, but it actually check every single field to see if it's similar or different, doing some semantic comparison. And after you do the second, the size is still the same. Okay, so we, we try to manage the size right now on the server side. That's why the server has become more accurate, but I, I'm pretty confident that still have uh, lots of software bug there as well. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so I have done the update. Now I can do uh, just like the homework. I can do the search. Of course, I can do the search. If I do search, now I'm getting this one, right? I can get this one back. And when I get this thing back, I should have, oh, wait a minute. I'm using the wrong version of the program. So suppose I have a, okay, there's a different version of the program from Homeware 8 I developed that was supposed to, to copy this. Okay, but that's okay. I, I, I already prepare what it should look like. So that is the base JSON. So I actually prepare a few JSONs over here. Let me see if I have it here. Um, oh, okay, I, I do have it, okay. So I will actually have a, a bbb.json. Okay, bbb.json, which is a, the same JSON, but I actually adding some historical record. So I adding one historical record. Okay, just one. Okay, so I have this, this record over here that's actually uh, exactly the same as base JSON, but it has only one record. So if I have this, now I can do a, a, um, a Validate. So now I want to do the uh, validate. I can do search. It. I can do update as well. That's no problem. If I do an update, let me let me actually do the update first. If I do an update for BBB, if I do update, now look at the size because of the record is grow a little bit because it has a history record. Okay, it grows a little bit, um, but I have a different JSON. Uh, let me try to validate this JSON first. If I do a validate this JSON, some over there is actually say fail minus A. Why is fail minus A? Because I only have, um, I only have uh, uh, one record. I have one history because I suppose I have a 20 record for me to actually be able to get a validated. So this one, uh, BBB JSON is going to not work. Okay, but I want to show you another JSON, which is CCC JSON, which is um, which is similar to that JSON. It also have a one record. It also have a one record, but I actually change one bit of the VSID. So so from VSID, my VSID supposed is seven nine nine four. Now it's a seven nine nine three. If you actually run this, try to do update, even update the, 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 the JSON. Just update the JSON. So down, hold on one second. Okay, sorry, there's a fall. Go over here. I think I will check this one. Maybe I already found the bug myself, because suppose when you change that, it should, it should not even recognize that JSON. Okay, I must have done, oh, no, 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 this, this is not the, the case. I should do different one. Okay, I will tell you the different one. Okay, so, so in order for me to, uh, to really pass the validation, I actually manually, going through the, uh, the, your VSID. So I create like a 21 uh, record, use a valid uh, VSID and put it in, construct a whole JSON. 
And that is called, uh, that is, you can, I only want to show you the file size. It's called, I call the superstar.json. Okay, so these two are almost the same. But CCC, I modify one VSID, but super BBB is actually still the, um, the, the valid one. So I'm going to do the validation first. If I do validation of super bbb.json and it will work. And then it will give me the validated um, um, uh, number that this is the checksum. But if I, and then that is, when I do this, I should actually save it to say fff.json. And then later I can actually submit this as my one of the 10 JSON. I need to actually get the credit for homework assignment number seven. But if I try CCC, I forgot what I did such that CCC also have a 21 record, but it failed because that some of the VSID um, um, is invalid in the check. Okay, so, so I, I kind of show you this example about, let me see if the server, okay, the server still survive, okay. The, the, the JSON grows a little bit, but not much after all this. And, uh, but that, that's the, the way you actually try to produce that. Okay, so this is a, a search, update, and also um, um, a validate. And this is a three tool for you to uh, develop. Okay, so let me come over here. Any question? Yes, the validate will return the JSON. If it fails, it will return you the, the, the status failed and with the error code. But if it's success, means it passed, validate, it will return you a JSON that you just save it uh, for submission, okay? So let me actually check. Somebody suggests that you use the final as the keyword. That, that might work, but you might get too many posts, by the way. Okay, you can try. I mean, nothing hurt, right? I mean, the worst case, you hurt the server, which is good. Somebody is going to get the extra credit. <coughs> yeah, I will, I will have office hour this Friday. I will, I will provide the, um, the, all the relevant code. I already provide some of them. Uh, on the on the server, uh, but I will provide a HW seven history .cdb today. I will upload that. Yes. So Shias, uh, let me just uh, share my screen. Let me write it down this way about the the step by step process. Okay. Okay, <coughs> the first step is for you to, if, if you, you can either do update if you are the author, or you can do search, which is you just get some uh, post from others, okay? And then what you will be doing is that, let, let me see, this one or this one. Let me just do this. And the second step, you need to append the history record for those you just received for those posts. Okay. And after you've done that, you update again. Okay. You update again. Okay. But then you can actually check if you think that the, the, the post has already accumulated 20 plus historical record, okay? And, and then you can actually try to do a validate. After validate, if it's, if it's a successful, you save the JSON. You save the JSON, the post JSON. With the, uh, the checksum. Okay, I mean, you just save the whole thing, receive from the validation process. 
And then after you accumulate enough, then you can do the hang in, okay? Um, in fact, it's being updated in both the the, um, the client side and uh, um, the the both the client side and the server side. Because if you think about that, when there is a post being delivered to you, right, you will submit the the post with your history record to the server. So now the server has a new history uh, record there. Um, the server might actually receive another update also with a history from another user. It's a server's responsibility to merge them together, okay? And, and then when you actually, later when you do a search, you can actually get a new version with, with other people's historical record as well. Yeah, we, we actually keep tracking uh, on the server side. No, you don't do your own validate program. You just, the validate program is just for you to simply submit the JSON to the, uh, to the server and get the result back. So, so that's why I said the validate, uh, the HW7 validate uh, .cpp is actually even simpler than HW7 update, but you still have to write the program. Oh, what program you we need to append the history record i okay you can use uh uh you can modify the hw7 history to actually append the his, history record or you can use develop some other program um which your way you decide how to do that i mean i i give you the freedom to do whatever you want but I just want to make sure that at the end, whatever you, you edit is acceptable to the, to the server. Yeah, you can just append. I mean, I, I don't want to say that you can even just manually use an editor to append. If you know what you're doing, I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it might not be a lot of work, but, but, but you just make sure that you append correctly. <clears throat> Any other question? I think I cover everybody. I guess I guess it's interesting for you guys to figure out what kind of post you want to generate and what kind of keyword you should use. I will let you guys decide what will work, what will not work, okay? I think that will be fun. Initially, I was thinking about give you some more guidance on the keyword. That, that kind of struck me a little bit, but I think that's a part of the fun for, for you to decide and uh, to explore your own social network since we are, we're not face to face, so it might be interesting for you to see how you can um, convey the right keyword such that you can grow your, your post nicely. <clears throat> yes, yes, you hand in the post and uh, and that. Yes, uh, Joel, each student has to create at least two posts, but you can create more because you don't know which one will be popular, right? I mean, you, you might create, um, um, 
10 and only get one become popular. So it's not only you create posts, you make sure that the post is, will get popular, will get 20. By the way, um, if you can get a, I, I will give, no, I probably shouldn't, shouldn't say that. I'm thinking about get extra credit for those for, for the, the highest historical record post, okay? I, I don't know whether that will create too much problem, the, the social problem to this course. But I'm, I'm, I will think about that. Yeah, but that's an interesting point. That will become com competitive too much. Yeah. Yes. So, so the server will check. A, f a few things, including the number of uh, VSID record. So you hand in those 10 JSON file because each of the posts that's being validated, the 10 uh, JSON file, there's 10. Uh, and then you also uh, hand in whatever the source code you actually wrote, you develop to actually um, to from the client side to interact with the server side, okay? So um, 20 unique ID, yes, at least 20 uniques. But 20 uniques means not only they're unique, but also they're from the real, real class, means the real ID from the class. We have, just to let you know for the record, let me actually see, I can probably show you this one. <coughs> So from this class, we have, we have a 186 VSID. So if somebody actually create another VSID next week, I will update the server. But so far in this class, we have 186 um, um, VSID, different ones. So those are, so, so the record, unless uh, until today, those will be the, the one that, that will be counted. Okay, I will say you will, when you create your own post, you will use the template that we have. You can either use template to do that. So uh, that's a good question, by the way, uh, Shiyas. Uh, I create a template, means that it has certain field, ID field, front field, and I just using JSON to encode my message. So I take a existing JSON and modify certain field. For example, if it's my post, then the ID, the post ID, the first part, will match my own VSID. And I just assign a random, a, a random number as the post ID. But I will let you to decide how you want to handle that part. Okay. Yes, Leo, that uh, the post that you are going to upload need to be in JSON format because that's, that's how the update function is where both the update function and the validate function, they are, they're, the, the, imp, the input argument are, are the post JSON. I will, <coughs> I, I, it's already running, but it's on a different server. I'm gonna to move to Cyrus. When I move to Cyrus, I will also have a, um, a, um, a, a check status page for you to see whether that's still running. Okay. <clears throat> yes, I you 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 could validate it would tell you validation fail. That's okay, um, but if 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 you have only ten ID, then you should 
uh, try to um, um, think about how to make it more popular. Maybe you want to do more search and maybe you should find a way to let other people know your VSID or something like that. <coughs> Sorry, the keyword for them to search your, your post. Or you can put a lot of different posts, right? The keyword, sorry. And, and then people search, people will, will find that out. By the way, I never tried this before. I don't know how quick, how slow you will get the valid post. That's why I'm thinking 20 might be a reasonable number for, for us to try to run it, okay? No, you need to validate every single post. Not just the post you, you create, you need to validate uh, the post. And what happens if the post is already bogus and, and you thought your name is there, but that post is bogus, which means that for some reason it's bogus, I won't tell you, but the server won't validate correctly. And then you use that because you need to have the, the validate uh, checksum. And the thing is that, um, the only way for you to sure this validate is through yourself call that validate function. You can do that, uh, Thomas, you can do that. However, I'm actually checking how many times that this particular post is being searched. So if you have one person just append 20 VSID to a post and just update once, um, that, that might look suspicious to the server. The other thing is that if you actually polish all on the same timestamp and also the same GPS location, the same IP address, and to that post. And uh, by the way, the server is actually going to check what's your real IP address as well. Um, so, so we check a few things. You might be able to fool the server, you might not. So you have to try it, I don't know. Yeah, I will provide that. When I test this minus A minus six, I, I will have a list about meaning uh, included. That's a good point, Scott. <clears throat> if two posts have the, the same keywords count as two different posts. So you can have all the posts share the same keywords still count as all the posts is not related. So I, I, I will, uh, sorry, when you say history of the 10, um, if you have two posts with the same keywords, but both of them have 20 VSID, history, they will count as two of the 10, yeah. I hope that's clear to you, uh, Leo. <clears throat> okay, any other question? Okay, I, I think I'm going to uh, stop recording and then just upload this to the to the um, the channel as soon as possible, so people can actually start seeing this as well. I mean, those of you who are here probably don't need to, but there are other people who cannot make it today. The relevant file today, just I mean, the relevant file is really just HW7 history, .cpp. Okay. <clears throat>